The properties of a chemical substance are as much determined by the atoms within it as by how those atoms are arranged. And that becomes more apparent when one looks at something called structural isomers. ISO stands for the word same. And MERS is Greek for parts. So we're looking at a family of chemicals that have the same parts. And in particular, they have the same molecular formula, but different structures, resulting in different connectivities of atoms and functional groups. Here I have an example of what are called isomers. First off, let's look at their formula. They both contain four carbons, and they both contain 10 hydrogens. So they share the same number and types of atoms, but they have different connectivities. For example, in this case, the carbons are arranged in a chain or a straight chain. And here we have a branched arrangement. This different connectivity results in different physical properties. I can see here a difference in the boiling points of the two. Now, that arises because the chain structure, if I consider it like this, there's lots of surface contact between adjacent molecules, creating strong intermolecular forces. In the case of my branch chain, it's a little bit more difficult to get the same sort of surface area of contact between the two, which reduces the London dispersion force and creates weaker intermolecular forces, and as a result, the lower boiling point. Now, there's several different ways by which we can create isomers. One technique is creating branching, and that has been sort of illustrated up here in this particular example. I have a branch versus a straight change, and you can have chains with multiple branches in them to create isomers. Another technique of creating an isomer is to move the particular functional group. So for this example, I have the hydroxyl functional group. And here I've moved and changed its position in the chain, this being a four carbon chain, one, two, three, and four. The connectivity in this one, I have it attached on carbon number two in the chain. Now it's worth mentioning, if I took this OH and put it on carbon number three, it would essentially be the same molecule, um, but just numbering from a different end of the molecule. So it's not considered an isomer. Here, I have another isomer with a hydroxyl group in it that also has four carbons, but I've also created a branch coming off the chain. And so this is but a third example of a functional group isomer, but also has branching. Now, this leads to something called different types of carbons. And in particular, the carbon I'm interested in is the carbon that is attached to the functional group. I'll move this up a bit. So examining this carbon, it's connected to a functional group and it's connected to one other carbon. This is what we call a primary carbon. And this gives rise to what we call a primary alcohol. Here, the OH is attached to this carbon. So our functional group being attached to that carbon, and that carbon is itself attached to two other carbons. This is what we would call a secondary carbon. And this gives rise to a secondary alcohol. Lastly, this one, that carbon, which is attached to the functional group, is attached to three other carbons and gives rise to what we call a tertiary carbon. And this would be called a tertiary alcohol. 
So that's moving uh, the position of the functional groups and we've covered branching. Let's look at another way of creating an isomer by changing the functional group or class of chemical. So in my first example here, I recognize a hydroxyl group. And in my second example, that oxygen in the middle of a carbon chain, that's a alkoxy functional group. Um, this belongs to the class of chemicals called alcohols. And this belongs to the ethers. Examining their molecular formulas, they both have two carbons. They both have six hydrogens and one oxygen. As a result, these would be considered isomers, and we would call them functional group or class isomers. So if we have alcohol, a two-carbon alcohol, there would be a corresponding two-carbon um, ether that would be its isomer. And this happens with a few other classes of chemicals as well. Um, our ketones can be converted to isomers that are aldehydes. And lastly, carboxylic acids they can be converted to a corresponding ester. So here we have um, functional groups and their corresponding classes that could be interconverted into various isomers. So let's now apply these ideas to a couple of questions. So here's my first one. Draw what we call the positional isomers of this three carbon compound containing chlorine. So I'm going to start off with three carbons in a row and I'll attach both of the chlorines to the first one. That leaves roof for a hydrogen and CH2 and CH3 here. So um, my two chlorines are attached to our first carbon. Let's try another connectivity difference. Let's take that chlorine and leave it in that position but take the second one and attach it to the second carbon. So I now have a different arrangement. Adding the hydrogens, that would be CH2. There's room for a hydrogen here and CH3. So this has a sort of a 1-1 one, one connectivity and this one a 1-2. One, Let's move on to another um, three carbon chain. I'm going to leave that chlorine there and let's move the other one over one more spot. And this would create connectivity with carbons one and three would be connected. And there's room for two hydrogens, two hydrogens, and two. I've exhausted now the movement of this particular chlorine. Um, let's try leaving that one alone. So that one I'll leave there. What if I move the other carbon uh, chlorine to this location. So this would be CH3, this would be CH, and this would be um, CH2. At first glance, this looks like a different connectivity. We would probably look and say, oh, now it's attached to carbons two and three. But how, if we numbered our chain from the other direction, we would see that it is really a 1-2 combination because we always prefer lowest numbers. So this is actually exactly the same chemical as the one up above, but just flipped. So that would not be an isomer. Let's move on now to another possibility. Um, three carbons in a row, but I'm going to put both of the chlorines on the middle or second carbon. And that's a combination I haven't come up with yet. So that would be another isomer. So that's it. There are four possible isomers of that chemical. And lastly, let's try this 
Question. Which of the following has a secondary carbon? So to be a secondary carbon, we need a functional group attached to a carbon. And that carbon would be attached to two other carbons to constitute a secondary one. So let's take a look at the structures of these compounds, starting with number one. So I have a CH3 connected to CH2 connected to CH2 and OH. So there's my functional group. There's the carbon to which it's attached, and it is attached to but one other. This is a primary one, so it doesn't fit the bill. Let's look at number two. We've got CH3 connected to CH and a bromine connected to CH2, connected to CH3. So there's my functional group, a halogenyl. There's the carbon, and it is indeed attached to two others. So that one does fit. And lastly, my third structure, um, I start CH3, it's connected to CH, and that has a branch off it, CH3. Now that's not a functional group, but just a branch. And then I move over here to again a CH combination, and this time NH2, an amino functional group, and that's attached to CH3. So there is my functional group, the amino functional group attached to that carbon, and it is attached to two others. So it is also a secondary example. So that's my answer. I want two and three. So that's it for a look at structural isomers. Thanks for watching.